This lesson is a super effective shortcut for anyone looking to get conversational in Portuguese fast, because I'm going to show you by working smarter and not harder on your vocabulary, you can actually understand huge chunks of what's being said in Portuguese in day-to-day -day life just by learning the 100 most common words. Olá pessoal, it is Liz from Talk the Streets bringing you more practical Portuguese in plain English. And as you know, it's my mission to unlock the amazing Portuguese language for those of you who are heading here. And this is one of my favorite hacks to get you speaking and understanding quickly. One of the biggest mistakes I see learners making is creating never-ending vocabulary lists because they think, well, the more words I know, the more I'm going to understand, right? Mm, kind of wrong. It's so easy to overwhelm ourselves, especially when we are just getting started, because the Portuguese language has over 170,000 words in it, which, let's face it, you're never going to learn all of them. But the good news is that our active vocabulary, those are the words that we are actually using regularly, is a hell of a lot smaller. In fact, it is estimated that if you know 100 of the most frequently used words in a language, you could understand up to 50% of what's being said in day-to-day -day life. So you can see where today's lesson is going. I'm going to break down 100 of the most frequently used words in Portuguese, complete with correct pronunciation and an example sentence. To get these words as a flashcard pack on Quizlet so you can practice them in your own time as well, you can also visit the description and download them for free. Shall we get started? So the biggest group that we are going to learn are nouns, which are just things. So let's get started with those. Number one, coisa. Tenho tantas coisas em casa. I want you to look out for the S in this word. Do you notice how it's a Z sound? Whenever we have an S between two vowels in Portuguese, we want to make sure that we're saying a Z. Coisa. Tempo. Tempo. Make sure that O on the end is an U sound. This can mean time or it can mean weather. For example, Há quanto tempo estás aqui? How long have you been here? Como está o tempo hoje? How is the weather today? Vês. Podes repetir outra vez? This means a turn or a time, but in this context of this sentence, it's can you repeat that another time? You'll notice that when we end a word in a Z, we want a sh sound. Vês. Noite. The word for night. Don't over-exaggerate that E on the end. Noite. Simple. Keep it in your throat. Noite. For example, boa noite. The opposite of night. Dia. Bom dia. Good day. Pai. Como se chama o teu pai? Nice and easy, the word for father. Mãe. A minha mãe é inglesa. This one's really tricky because you have the nasal sound in there. When we see an A with that accent over the top, it means I have to make a really nasalized A. Mãe. Filho. Filho. This one is super hard because we have that LH sound. I actually have a whole video on this sound over here that's going to really help you make that Y sound. But this means child or more specifically son. For example, O que faz o teu filho? Vida. Vida. Nice and simple meaning life. For example, Ele está bem na vida. Anos. Anos. Quantos anos tens? So this is the word for years. And this is how to ask someone, how old are you? But literally it translates to, how many years do you have? Senhor. Senhor. This means man or gentleman, and I want you to look out for the NH here. When we have an N and an H next to each other in Portuguese, I need to make a N sound, okay? So, for example, Falaste com o senhor? Did you speak to the man? The female of senhor is, of course, 
senhora, senhora. So keep that nice ny sound in there and those closed vowels. So for example, a senhora já foi embora. Has the lady left? Pessoas, pessoas. This means people. Now, when we have uh, two sets of S's in one word, people can get confused because we do have a variety of ways of saying S in Portuguese. So we've got two different ones inside this one word. A double S is a straightforward S and an S at the end is a SH. So we want to say PESSOAS. Practice that one. As pessoas estão à espera. The people are waiting. Verdade. Verdade. This is another example of when we want to keep our E's nice and closed in our throat. So, this means the truth. So, for example, é verdade. It's true. Trabalho. Trabalho. Now, there we have that LH sound again, so make sure that you are practicing saying that one correctly. And another word ending in an O, making sure we have an O sound is going to be important. This is the word for work. So, for example, Como está o trabalho? How is work going? Dinheiro. Dinheiro. Another NH with a N sound and another U at the end. This means money. So, for example, O dinheiro está na mesa. The money is on the table. Nom. Nom. Again, we're not saying nomi or nome, as most people want to do when they say an E at the end of a word. We're swallowing it, keeping it in our throat. Nom. So, this means name. For example, Qual é o nom do hotel? Mundo, mundo, meaning the world. So, for example, Ela é a melhor jogadora do mundo. She's the best player in the world. Certeza, certeza. This means certainty. So, you could say to someone, Tens a certeza? Are you sure? Very common, useful phrase. Amigo. Amigo, meaning friend. And once again, I hope you can hear how close the A and the O both are in this word. This is one of the things that really differentiates Spanish and Portuguese, because instead of saying amigo, where we have an open A and an open O, in Portuguese we say amigo. It sounds quite different. So, for example, eu, eu meu melhor amigo, he's my best friend. Problema, problema. Also a closed A at the end there, again making a sound really, really Portuguese by keeping those vowels closed. Also interesting to note that even though this ends in an A, this is a masculine word. So for example, Há algum problema? Is there a problem? Família, família. Now, this is a useful word that teaches us how to stress words correctly in Portuguese. You can see it has an accent on that I, so that is where the stress needs to go. Familia. Of course, it means family. Uh, for example, A minha família vive na Inglaterra. I do have a whole video about how to stress words correctly because sometimes it's not so simple if there's no accent on the word. So I'll leave that video linked in the description as well. Momento. Momento. This means moment, nice and simple. So for example, Um momento, por favor. One moment, please. Cidade. Cidade. Keeping that E in our throat. This means city, so you could say Não conheço a cidade. I don't know the city. Minuto. Minuto. Meaning minute. So, for example, Um minuto e estou aí. One minute and I'll be there. Hora. Hora. Keeping that A nice and closed at the end, meaning hour. So, for example, Vai demorar uma 
hora. Cuidado. Cuidado. This is when you want to say careful. So, for example, tenham cuidado. Take care or be careful. Semana. Semana. Keeping those vowels nice and closed. It means week. So, for example, a semana foi fantástica. It was a great week. Fim de semana. Fim de semana. Now, these words that end in an M, like the word fim, can be really difficult and where people often get pronunciation wrong. That M at the end is telling me to nasalize the vowel that goes before it. So instead of making any kind of M sound, listen out, I'm not making a M sound, instead I'm doing a nasal I. Fim de semana. This is, of course, the weekend. So I could say, for example, Bon fin de semana. Of course, numbers are going to be a really important part of your vocabulary and I have done a whole video on that over here. I will link it in the description. It covers all the words up to 1000. But in this group of 100 most frequent words, I'm just including the masculine for the number two because this comes up all the time. And this is Deutsch. Deutsch. Okay, so remember that nice sh sound on the end of the word because words ending in an S need to have that sh there. So for example, Tens dois minutos. Do you have two minutes? The next group of words are verbs, but they are conjugated, which means turning it into whether I'm talking about myself or somebody else. They are conjugated in the most common forms, okay? So this is one of the hacks that I talked about in my recent Learn Portuguese from Zero video, that we don't actually have to learn all of the five conjugations for every single verb that we learn. It's gonna just flood our brains and overwhelm us. So by learning these ones, that are the most common that come up all the time is really going to help us improve our everyday speech. So the first one is tenho. Tenho. I have. So for example, tenho 36 anos. I am 36 or I have 36 years. That's how the Portuguese say it. Vou. Vou. This means I go. But the vowel pair OU is often very difficult for people to pronounce correctly because they want to say VU, okay? This is how it would sound if there was no O in that word, but because there is, we want to say an O followed by an U and slide one into the other, making an O sound, okay? So this is VU, I go. For example, VU A FESTA. I'm going to the party. Say. Say. This means I know. Now again, the vowel pair EI is very tricky for people to get right, but let's apply the same logic. We want to make an E followed by an E. So when I slide one into the other, E. E. Okay, that's how it should sound. Say. For example, say falar português. I know how to speak Portuguese. A. Ah. A. Ah. Now, this is a difficult one to translate, but we can say that it means there is. So, for example, há cinco lugares aqui. There are five places here. Now, the one thing you need to remember to say this correctly is just to keep the H silent and keep the A nice and open. A. Ah. Quero, quero. This comes from the verb querer and means I want. So, for example, Quero dois gelados, por favor. I want two ice creams, please. Posso, posso. This means I can or I may, or when we use it in the terms of a question, it means may I or can I. So, for example, Posso entrar? May I enter? Can I come in? Acho. Acho. I think a very useful one to know. For example, acho que sim. I think so, yes. Parece. Parece. 
Again, keeping those E's nice and closed in the throat. This comes from the verb parecer, meaning to seem. So this would mean, it seems so. For example, O que te parece? How does that seem to you? Or a more loose translation, what do you think? Preciso. Preciso. Very useful, meaning I need. So for example, Preciso de um favor. I need a favor. Podemos. Podemos. So this is the only one in this list that is in the we form and it means we can or if it's a question, can we? So for example, Podemos ir ao restaurante? Can we go to the restaurant? The final verb, espera. Espera. Coming from the verb esperar, which has a few meanings, but in this context it means to wait. So this is giving someone the command to wait. Espera aí, for example. Now, remember that the S in this word is going to be a SH. This is because we have a vowel, then an S, then a consonant, okay? So that SH needs to be nice and pronounced. Espera. Next up, we have a bunch of adjectives, which are, of course, describing words. So let's take a look at the most frequently used adjectives. Bon. Bon. Now, this means good when the thing you are talking about is masculine. And you'll remember that trick that I told you about earlier on in this video, where when a word ends in an M, we're not going to say M, we're not saying BOM here. Instead, we're nasalizing that O. Bon. If you're finding it tricky to get this nasal sound right, this is something that I cover in detail in my free lesson for beginners. So go to the description and register for that if you need some help because I've got some really great tips in there that are going to help you. So an example sentence might be O jantar foi muito bom. Because jantar is masculine, that's how we'll describe it. Boa. Boa. This is the feminine version of good. So if the thing that you are describing is a feminine word, this is the word you're going to use. For example, A sopa está boa hoje. The soup is good today. Certo. Certo. Making sure we have that nice U at the end. This has a few definitions, but it usually means correct or certain. So, for example, É certo que amanhã Vai chover. It's certain that it's going to rain tomorrow. Grande. Grande. Again, taking care not to exaggerate these vowels, but keeping them closed and in the throat. This one, of course, means big. So we could say, for example, A casa é muito grande. Novo. Novo. Nice and simple. It means new. So, for example, Ele é o novo vizinho. He's the new neighbor. One of my favorites, ótimo. Ótimo. This means great. So I can even use this to say, estou ótima. E tu? I just changed the ending there to talk about myself because I'm a girl. Now, I haven't included many prepositions in this list. These are those really small words like in, on, at, to. And the reason I haven't included them is because these ones need to really be taken in context. They're going to mean lots of different things in lots of different sentences. So it's actually better to learn prepositions in the context of a full sentence and not like this as a kind of standalone word. So there are a couple that are more simple that I have included. So here we go. Até. Até. This one means until. So we want to make sure that we have a nice uh, accent on the end there because remember, wherever we see the accent, that's where the stress has to go. Até. So for example, até logo. Until later or just simply see you later. Another nice nasal word, sang. Sang. This means without. So for example, sem sal. This means without salt or no salt. Next we have some conjunctions. So these are words that are going to help us join up a sentence. So you're going to recognize all of these. E. E. Nice and simple, it means and. So for example, eu e a Joana fomos à praia. 
Joanna and I went to the beach. Now, I want you to be really careful with the pronunciation of this because of course we have an E with an accent, which is E. And when we see the E without the accent by itself, it needs to be an E sound, just like a double E in English. So watch out for that and make sure you're getting it correct. Mush. Mush. Now, this means but, and I really want you to pay attention to the pronunciation of this. Lots of people want to say mash or mash. That's because they have heard most of their Portuguese from Duolingo. But here in Portugal, we are going to use a really nice closed A, mash. So, for example, comi mash tenho fom. I ate, but I'm still hungry. Porque. Porco. Now this seems really weird as if we're saying the word pork, <laughs> but again, it's all about making sure we have that nice closed E and we're not creating too many syllables by pronouncing this word like porque, for example, it's different to Spanish. So this does mean because. So for example, comprei porque gostei. I bought it because I liked it. Oh, oh. Now, this is the same vowel pair that we saw in the word vo, so hopefully you feel good about how to pronounce this now. And this means or. So, for example, queres o bolo ou a tarte? Do you want the cake or the tart? The next group are interjections. So, these are kind of exclamations that we make or remarks we make during speech. So, for example, now, now. This is, of course, the word for no, and we want to make sure we have a really nice nasal sound in there because, of course, we have the A with the little accent, and that's one of the ways to tell that we need to nasalize a vowel. So, for example, now, obrigado, no, thank you. The opposite, of course, is sim, sim, a nice nasal I, just like fim in fim de semana, okay? So remember those nasal sounds. It's not just the accent that tells us, but it's if the word ends in an M as well. So this, of course, means yes. So we could say, for example, sim, claro, yes, of course. Of course, this is where we can include our hello and goodbye. Hola, hola. So for example, hello, how are you? Hola, como estás? Then we would have goodbye. Adeus. Adeus. This EU is really difficult for people to grasp as well, but again, we'll follow the same pattern that we did before of sliding from one vowel into the next. We go from E into an U, which makes an EU, EU sound. So this should be adeus. So for example, we can say, Adeus, até a próxima. Goodbye, see you next time. What about please and thank you? Se faz favor. Se faz favor. This is our please. So, for example, um copo de vinho se faz favor. A glass of wine, please. For thank you, we have obrigado or obrigada. If, like me, you're a female, you're going to change the ending. So, for example, I can say, Muito obrigada. Thank you very much. I did do a whole video over here on alternative ways to say obrigado if you want to sound a bit more like a native and a bit different when you are responding. Desculpa. Desculpa. So this means sorry, but it's also a way to get somebody's attention as well. And I want you to remember that that S is going to be a SH. Can you remember why? It's because we have a vowel, then an S, and then a consonant, okay? So make sure you're pronouncing that one correctly. An example sentence would be Peço desculpa, foi sem querer. I'm sorry, it was by accident. It was without wanting to. Oia. Oh, yeah. Now, tricky again because of that LH sound, so make sure you are practicing that. This comes from the verb oyar, meaning to look. So it's like you're saying to somebody, hey, look, okay? It's used all the time in Portuguese. So, for example, you might say, olha, eu Miguel. Oh, look, 
It's Miguel. Pois. Pois. Now, this is one of those words that I call a filler word. It is used all the time. And I've got a few videos on this topic as well that I will link in the description. But essentially, it's really difficult to translate this word. But I would kind of say it as well then, or basically agreeing with, with whatever the other person has said. So for example, you can say, poise, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it is. Another great interjection that's used all the time. A serio. A serio. This is a way of saying, really? Okay. So for example, you could say, A serio. Now sabia. Oh, really? I didn't know. The rest of the words are a bunch of different things from adverbs to pronouns to interrogatives, but you don't need to worry about any of that grammatical jargon. You just need to know that these are super useful words with simple, direct translations in English. So just go ahead and learn them. Bang. Bang. This means well. For example, estou bem, obrigada. By now you will have noticed that that M is telling me to nasalize that E and I hope by now you're doing it perfectly. Mais. Mais. This means more. So for example, Queria mais cerveja, por favor. I'd like more beer, please. Aqui. Aqui. This means here. And again, pay attention to how close that A is. It's not aqui, it's aqui happening in the throat. So for example, estou aqui, I am here, muito, muito, this means very. So for example, estou muito feliz, I'm very happy, já, já. Now this one has a few definitions, I actually did a video about it recently over here, but the most simple translation is already, for example, já vi esse filme. I've already seen that film. So. So. Again, that accent tells me I want a nice open O and to put the stress there. So. This means only. So, for example, Só quero um café. I just want a coffee. Agora. Agora. This means now and again. You've heard me say it a million times, but pay attention to that closed A. A, uh, not A. Agora. So, for example, vou agora à loja. I'm going to the shop now. La. La. Meaning there. For example, fui lá ontem. I went there yesterday. Some very helpful question words. Quando. Quando. This means when, and I want you to pay attention to the fact that when we have a Q U A in a word, we are actually going to make that qu sound, okay? Quando. So, for example, quando foste a Portugal? When did you go to Portugal? The next one, however, is quem. Quem. A nasal E, we now know why, but pay attention to the fact that when we have a Q-U-E uh, in, a, in a word, we're not going to use a qu, it's going to be a straightforward k. So this is a really important distinction that people often get wrong when they're trying to pronounce these words, so pay attention to that. Onde. Onde. This one means where. So for example, onde foste ontem? Where did you go yesterday? Em town. Em town. Again, nice nasal sound at the end there. Again, another difficult one to translate. We refer to it as a filler word. It can mean lots of different things, but let's just say it's a way of saying, hey. So for example, hey, how are you? Então, como estás? Mesmo. Mesmo. Now the S in this word is very tricky to pronounce, but it's actually very similar to the J sound that we have in the words pleasure, treasure, okay? Mesmo, all right? Now again, this can have a couple of different definitions. It can mean the same, or it can mean really, really. So if I say, estou mesmo cansada, I am really, really tired. Nunca, nunca. 
it means never. So, for example, nunca fui a Paris. I've never been to Paris. Ainda. Ainda. This means still. So, for example, Ainda estás aqui? Are you still here? Também. Também. Nice and nasal. Again, you now know why, because it ends in an M. But pay attention to where the accent is here. It's on the E, so I need to make sure that that is where the stress is going, okay? So this means as well. So, for example, I could say, Também vou ao concerto. I am also going to the concert. Talvez. Talvez. This one means maybe. So, for example, I could say, Talvez vá às compras. Maybe I will go to the shops. Nem. Nem. This one means neither. So I will have to use it twice in a sentence if I'm saying neither nor. So for example, nenhum, nenhum outro, neither one nor the other. Depois. Depois. Meaning afterwards. So, for example, depois da viagem, fomos para casa. Sempre. Sempre. This one means always. So, for example, estou sempre a esquecer-me dos óculos. I am always forgetting my glasses. Antes. Antes. Meaning before. So, for example, o que fazias? Antes disto. What did you do before this? Fora. Fora. Meaning outside. So, for example, Estou cá fora. I'm outside. Hoje. Hoje. Remember, keep that H silent and that E nice and closed in the throat. This one means today. So, for example, Estou livre hoje. I am free free today. Then of course we need ontem. Ontem meaning yesterday. So for example, ontem fui ao médico. Then of course we have amanhã. Amanhã meaning tomorrow. But don't forget because I have that squiggly line on the A, it has to be a nasal A and it tells me that that's where the stress goes. So I'm going to say Amanhã. So, for example, amanhã é um novo dia. Menos. Menos. Meaning less. So, for example, hoje estou menos cansada. Today I am less tired. Dentro. Dentro. The opposite of fora, meaning inside. So, for example, vou para dentro. I'm going inside. Mal. Mal. Now, this one means badly, but I want you to pay attention to how we say the L here. It's not like a L, -l like we have at the front of our mouth in English. The Portuguese actually make their L's a bit further back in the throat. We call it a dark L. So, L, it's more like that, okay? Mal is happening here. So, for example, está mal escrito. It's written badly. Poco. Poco. Now, this means a little bit, and we have that O-U sound in it as well, which, if you remember correctly, sounds like this. O. So this is poco. It's a slightly longer sound than you would hear in Spanish, for example, which would just be poco. This is poco. So, for example, vi un poco do film. I saw a little bit of the movie. Tudo. Tudo. Now, this means everything. And even though we have a U and an O here in this word, they actually sound the same, like an U. Tudo. So, for example, está tudo feito. It's all done. Todos. Todos. Now, this means all. And in contrast to the last word, we're not going to have an O sound for both O's here. The first one is going to be an open O, TO, and then we have the OOSH, TODOSH. 
it's really important to get the difference between these two right. So, for example, Vou todos os dias ao ginásio. I go to the gym every day. All the days. Nada. Nada. We have one open A and one closed A. Nada. This means nothing. So, for example, Não é nada. It's nothing. Alguém. Alguém. This means somebody. So, for example, Está aqui alguém? Is somebody here? Algo. Algo. Meaning something. So, for example, Tens algo de comer? Have you got anything to eat? Claro. Claro. Meaning, of course. So, for example, Claro, sem problema. Of course, no problem. Ninguém. Ninguém. This is a scary one because people see the U and they see the M at the end and they see an accent and think, oh my gosh, this is such a difficult word. So, just break it up into the two syllables. Ninguém. This means nobody, and we do actually use double negatives in Portuguese. So, an example sentence might be Não vi ninguém na rua. I didn't see anyone in the street, even though the literal translation is I didn't see no one in the street. Because, as I said, in Portuguese, we do use double negatives. Our final 100th word. Comigo. Comigo. This means with me. So, for example, I would say, Vens comigo? Are you coming with me? Phew! What a lesson! If you made it to the end, very, very well done. You are now well on the path to unlocking the majority of Portuguese conversation just by learning these 100 super frequent words. Don't forget you can download these as a flashcard set in the description so you can continue practicing these yourself and testing yourself. And if you found a lot of these sounds tricky because I know that there is a lot of difficult sounds in Portuguese, you can also get my free pronunciation guide also linked in the description. I will be back at the same time next week with more tips and tutorials to improve your Portuguese conversation skills. So I hope to see you there. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a thing. Ciao for now.